morning friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. And today I wanted to take this older porcelain ceramic Christmas lamp and turn it into something that I could use every day. And it's much more my style. It's got French script on it. And I transferred this onto here and I'll show you all of the easy steps for how you can get this done too. I wanted to mention I'm not doing any decoupage on this today because some people have asked me to just focus on the transfer aspect. So that's what I'm going to do in today's video. Now the first thing I did was I took the Zinser cover stain and sprayed this. You see how shiny this is? It's really slippery. You can put chalk paint right over the top of this, but I don't want to do two or three coats of chalk paint, so I'm going to use this primer, which you can see right on the surface, uh, right on the can, it says that it's good for glass, metal, porcelain, ceramic. It's excellent for this. So I'm just going to spray coat this one piece and let it dry for 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm going to add a coat of the Annie Sloan chalk paint. Now that this primer has dried, I'm going to add, you can see there's still a little bit of the design showing through, a tiny bit. I'm not too concerned with that because for now I'm going to cover it with the Annie Sloan chalk paint and I'm using a color, I think it's called Old White. Yeah, Old White. So I'll be using that on here. And there are several chalk paints out on the market. You can make your own. The ones that I've made on my own using recipes I found online tended to chip. I really don't advise you using the homemade chalk paints. I also have a second favorite chalk paint of mine that I list on my website and the link to that is right below this video in the description box. And by the way, chalk paint makes an excellent base for transfers. So I'm just going to cover this whole surface and put it aside to dry. While this was drying, I went over to the Graphics Fairy, and if you are not familiar with the Graphics Fairy, it's www.graphicsfairy.com. There are thousands of images, and you can print these out on your computer for free. I strongly recommend a laser printer. If you don't have a laser printer, you can make copies on your inkjet, but I suggest you go to the copy center where all of the prints, uh, all of the printers are laser printers. And you want to print this out in reverse. And I'm taking some water on a paintbrush, that's just water. And I'm going around the edge of just the part of this paper that I want to use. I tore this out and I placed it over the item that I was going to do the transfer on. And you can see I printed it out so that it is almost the exact right size. Now you see that it's backwards here. The script is all going to the opposite direction because we're going to flip this and then it will come out the other way. Now here's a trick that I learned that really seemed to help out with this. Actually, there are a couple of tricks. I took a gel medium. There are transfer mediums. People ask me if they can use decoupage glue transfer mediums. You can play around with a lot of different things. I have. I just did not find that the transfers came out consistently nice or the way I wanted them to unless I used a gel medium. And I'm using this artist's paintbrush and I'm taking my matte gel medium and I'm going to put it over just the images on the paper. So instead of covering this whole piece of paper with the gel medium, I'm going to just cover everything that I want transferred. You don't have to get carried away with this, so you don't have to outline each and every letter. You can just take the brush and go over the whole thing. I'm being a little bit careful here. But just take your brush and go over the whole word, the whole section, 
the whole area where you want the transfer to appear on your surface. I also take this when I'm done and put it aside to dry. You can put it in an oven if you set the oven to 170 degrees, then turn the oven off. It's not hot enough to burn this, so you can put this in your oven. It will dry that much faster. It also cements this gel medium. I'm sorry, it cements this writing onto the gel medium. So let me finish this, then I'm going to put it in the oven. So you want to make sure you use a gel medium or try to use a gel medium for the best transfers. And then you want to just go over the area where you want to transfer the images, not this paper. Now I'm going to place the paper down onto my surface. I'm just doing this to see how it's going to fit. I am working on a smaller surface and a rounded surface, which can be a little bit more complicated. You may want to practice this on a flat surface first, just to see how you like it. You know, you can get those pieces of wood from the craft store. You can even work on the inside of a cereal box because you can still see the transfer that way. So I'm painting that same gel medium over the surface. By the way, I took a wine bottle, covered it with chalk paint, followed this same process, came out beautifully. So you may want to take an old bottle, an older bottle that you're not using anyway and practice on that. And now I'm going to lay my transfer face down over my surface and I'm going to wrap it around. Now the important thing is you want to make sure all of the areas with the writing on it or images, you may have a few images, get transferred onto this. So take a spoon, if you're working on a flat surface, a spoon or a brayer, you can use your finger, your thumbnail, or just your fingertip and smooth out any wrinkles. By the way, it is okay if you have a few wrinkles here and there. You don't want very large creases. I can see through this paper. I don't know if you can see it that well in the video. I can see through this where there are wrinkles. My images are still getting pressed down. So in essence, you're gluing this down to the surface. Press all of the air bubbles out, all of the wrinkles. You want to make sure this part gets done. And I'm following these same instructions for drying. I'm going to put it back in the oven. You don't have to do this, by the way. You can leave everything to air dry. You may need a few hours to let the gel medium dry thoroughly. The oven does it that much faster. And I'm going to also put this in the oven and I'm going to leave it in for about a half an hour. Oven was set to 170. I turned it off. It's going to stay nice and hot in there and dry for quite a while. So I'm going to leave this in for about a half an hour, maybe an hour. You really want these images to stick to this. Once everything was perfectly dry, I took a damp, rough cloth and I started to rub away the paper. Some people use their finger for this. You can do that, but I was doing so many transfers that I was just about rubbing away the imprint on my thumb. So it got to be a little painful after a while. And I found that's one of the benefits of using the gel medium. It secures this on here so well, the writing or your images that you're able to take a damp, rough rag like this. You can use an old washcloth, an old towel, and just rub away all of the paper. You'll start to notice that there are a bunch of little bits of paper all over the place. One of the other benefits of using the gel medium is that you only have to do this once. When you're using an inferior product to do the transfer, you've got to do this step several times. Keep going back, removing the paper. Keep going back, removing the paper. Whoa, that's too much. <laughs> So I just love the gel medium for this reason. I'm impatient. One other thing I keep forgetting to mention, I'm sorry. 170 degrees is the temperature in your oven for Fahrenheit. 
uh, the temperature for Celsius is 76.66667, something like that. But at least you have a better idea if you're outside the States which temperature to use if you're going with uh, Celsius. And one other quick tip, make sure you wash your brush immediately. If the gel medium stays on there, it can ruin a really nice brush. So seal up your medium and wash that brush right away, okay? I'm just going to rub away all of the paper on here so that the only thing that's left behind are these images and my script. And here's how the project looks now that I'm done. There's still a few little pieces of paper balled up around here. See, really, right here what happened was I got a little of the gel medium on the outside of the paper. This stuff works so well that when I tried to pull it away, I was a little overzealous right there. So there's a little bit of a space. If you do happen to have that happen, you can take a black marker and go over the spot that rarely happens with me. I kind of rush a little bit when I'm making the videos in order to get these done within two or three days, which is how long it takes to make a little tiny 15 minute video. <laughs> but here's what I'm going to do next. Now that this is all dry and all of the papers removed, I'm going to put a top coat on it or a varnish. I want this to stay matte so it's got a little bit of an older look to it. So I'm going to use the Liquitex Matte Varnish because after doing this for so many years I have found that it provides virtually no shine. Even when I've used other matte varnish top coats I see a tiny bit of a shine. By the way do not put this in the oven. The top coats or varnishes need to dry uh, air dry. They need to dry naturally and I'm covering the whole surface and I'll put this aside to dry. And here is how our final project looks. You may have noticed I changed the top glass piece there. But here's how we look at nighttime. I've got a candle glowing up in the top of this. There's my cat checking out my latest project. Not very interested. <laughs> and here are a few other shots of it. And I hope I've helped you out a little bit with the mysteries of transfers. And Upcycle with Decoupage is also on Facebook. If you go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out. Thank you so much for subscribing, and I will see you guys next week with another video. Thanks again, friends. Bye-bye.